We're back from New York, had a great time. However, I did find myself with a cold Wednesday night. Shout out to emergency. That stuff kicked in. By next day, I was back to 100%. Yeah, I've never been to a con where I actually traveled with hand sanitizer and vitamin C tablets and fist bumped my way through the entire con. If, if I remembered, a lot of the handshakes came out anyway. I still got a little bit of cold, but uh, feeling lucky I dodged a bullet because it was done in like two days, three days. It was Is it rude one. if somebody comes up to you and it's like, hey, nice to meet you, and then you're like, eh, I'm just going to bump your fist instead. They're trying to shake your hand, but you... It's awkward, man. Well, you gotta, you gotta understand. That's... I always have to explain it. It's like I'm just trying to I'm not trying to get sick, so and, we're bumping fists. And they appreciate that too because they get it, right? A lot of uh, washing of hands, a lot of hand sanitizer. I was kicking myself for not having a mask on the airplane, though. I think that's where I come across the worst sickness, though. I think that's what happens. It's like on the airplane, we're all sharing that air. But it was a great convention. We're gonna chat about our time at New York City Comic Con. We're going to talk about some announcements that we thought were really dope and that we're pumped for. We also have some conversations about subscription increases that I find just super fascinating. But before we get into it, hit the subscribe button. We make a lot of comic book themed content and we'd love it if you join the community. But we had a great time in New York. You guys got to go to New York Comic Con whereas I got to stay here and not go to Comic Con. I had to work still. What was it like? What fill me in? I mean, I saw some pictures and like a couple, a couple video things from you guys. I got some video messages from Mr. Tom here, but I was not there, so I need to live through you. Tell me what happened. All of it. I got in the day early. I got in Monday because I want to get on that show floor as soon as possible to shop it before it's open to the public on Thursday. So I get there Monday. And I get my whole night's rest, so Tuesday comes up. You're like a motivational unpacker. Like You're walking the show floor with your coffee, and all these dealers, they're getting their box cutters out. They're, they're trying to get their stuff set up, and you're like, oh, yeah, you need any help? You doing good? And you're just making your rounds waiting for that first opportunity. What you got? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so competitive out there. I got to tell you guys. You got to do it, man. That's so far sneaky. Is- yeah, and a lot of people have like these long relationships. A lot of people get in there sooner than I do, and I've been there like five, six years. So I have people that I get to see, but man, it's tough getting in there. And like I mentioned, it's there's got to be at least another 15, 20 people out there looking mm-hmm. who have long histories with other dealers, and they get to look first, and we all shop a little different. But you Oh, know. it's strange. It's not a first-come, first-serve type of situation, by all means. No, I, I, you know, people get shunned all the time. Like, uh, no, no, he gets first look, or they'll just shove you aside with like a hand gesture keep on moving but i don't know man i mean i have to get there like i said i've had that fomo it's always the fear of missing out and it was a pretty good con like i I bought a lot of cool books and sold pretty well and it was a fun show and then when you showed up um i think you got in on tuesday right right and so you had all day wednesday to just check out the setup and there were some some things going on, things falling that shouldn't be falling and dropping. Oh my gosh, yeah, we were going through on Wednesday, helping with the setup, helping our friends, and there was this giant safe that was being lifted by a one of those fork, what are they, fork machines? Yeah, fork an episode fork of Looney lifts. Tunes, who's lifting a giant safe over the floor, like for any reason other than Looney Tunes. Assuming there was something really expensive in that safe that they felt like they had to transport an entire safe, or it was for a prop. I couldn't find out any info on it. Like, there wasn't anyone talking about it. But the thing fell, and it shook the floor so hard. It was really scary. Yeah, I was two to three hours away looking at some boxes, and I felt the ground vibrate from this safe falling. People will have safes because you can't take the inventory with you every night. So sometimes inventory is so expensive, you just lock it up in a safe. Okay. So it's only the good stuff that's in that safe that fell. No, nothing was in the safe yet. Okay. It's coming it to the It would have been put in there, likely. Oh, that's scary. That's, yeah. And, and, and it got dropped once and then picked up again. And then it dropped a second time. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. And the, the thing that's scary is, like, imagine having that drop on your foot or something. Like, that's how you lose right? a foot or crush a limb. Yeah. That's terrifying. It was a great show, man. We had a lot of fun. Uh, we were helping out our friends that we get to see once, twice a year at these conventions. A lot of great books. Community was awesome. Holy smokes. So many people went out to Silver Age Collectibles, our booth out there, just to say hi and to shop our friend's comic book store. Thanks again to Gus at Silver Age Comics. He's out in Astoria. I've been there since 1991. And it's a great place for us to all get together. I got to set up there and split the space with him. It was a good show. And thank you to everybody else who come, who came out and Got to say hi and really get to meet you guys. Sounds like you guys had a lot of fun. It was fun, Ryan. It was a lot of fun. You got to come out next year. 
But you know what? I also had a really successful hunt and I found so many dope comic books. And one in particular was Ant-Man and the Wasp issue number two. This is a comic book that I really only know because of Key Collector Comics, the first sponsor of the show. If you hit the link in the bio, you can download it on either Apple or Android, whichever you prefer. And yeah, this is a comic book that was uploaded a long time ago, but I know it because it's the first Donnie Cates published work in comic books. So it was a fun find. I was able to show it off on my story while hunting at New York Comic Con on the dirty, dirty con floors. Holy smokes, my hands, you, you, your hands get black after touching so much old paper at the end of a con. Like it's, Gross. It's, yeah, you're just washing hands all weekend. You got to keep them lotioned up, moisturized. Did you guys cut your hands on any mylars this time? Man, i pretty sure I avoided most any box with a full of mylars. I did some digging, but... I was trying to be very careful. You're, you're. It is a concern for me. I'm not gonna lie. I, I am a little fearful of a box of Mylars. Every time I see a box of Mylars, I think of that. Use code Tom101 to get a free week subscription of the best comic book app that exists on the market. Um, another thing that we found, actually, our friend, our homie, shout out Stray Flexen. Yeah, Yanni, who's just recently married, got to meet his wife as well, was over at New York Comic Con. He was posting pictures of his wedding. Holy smokes, it's so cool. Like golden age comic books on the cake and stuff, like like uh, in frosting and all that. Comic deals going on during the wedding. It was basically a comic show slash wedding, and they looked like they had a great time. But this guy is a serious golden age collector. He's awesome as a person to follow on Instagram, but he's got great taste in comics, so I encourage you to do so. But he found something really interesting at New York Comic Con that brought a lot of conversation to the show floor. What did he find and what did he post, Jeff? Yeah, so we're going to discuss a thing called sub-creases, okay, or subscription creases. So this is when, so comics used to be shipped to you in an envelope, but not only just in a flat envelope, they would fold the comic in half lengthwise, shove it in a skinny envelope, and ship it out. And so you would subscribe for this service. And the nice thing about it is the books would be a little bit cheaper, and you would get them right before they hit the newsstand. So you got them first. But the problem with that is a crease would develop. So generally, you'd have a line break on the front cover and on the back cover. And that becomes a thing called a subscription crease. And it's almost kind of folded in a way. So when you op- leave it laying out, it's not 100% flat. So when you hear that term, you know that's what subcreases mean. But we got to see three key books still in their envelopes folded in half. Yeah, it's a gorgeous thing to see. It's something funny because this is a problem that a comic will face, you know? If it has a subcrease, that grade is going down by like half. And in most cases, worse because of the color break. But in this case, we have a completed piece of history here that has been kept together and now that value is actually preserved. Yeah, I mean, check out these three books that we have here, okay? You have a Marvel Spotlight 5, which is the first appearance of Ghost Rider. You have Iron Man 55, which is the first appearance of Thanos and Drax. And then you have X-Men 94, which is the first new X-Men in series. I mean, those are three big Bronze Age keys, and here we have them in these envelopes still. The envelopes that were made so that they would fit likely in that little flap on your door. Uh. And then you know they what I mean? just plop right on the floor too, probably right on the corner. Like, I'm just I'm just visualizing the worst case scenario. Right here. in front of your dog waiting to eat it. Right, exactly. But perfectly preserved. Like the address is still on there. That OG address when those books came out. It's a it's a great sight to see. Yeah, I mean, outside of the fold in the middle, they're beautiful looking books. I think a lot of people think that the comics themselves were folded largely because of like USPS or something like they were jamming it in someplace trying to get it shipped quickly but no this is how they got them out to the consumers and the only way they could figure out to do it in the most effective manner yeah they weren't as sturdy as magazines or as big because magazines they would just slap the label on and ship it but in comics they came in a brown mailer type format So well done on the hunt there. It was cool to see. And that's something that I'm starting to keep in mind when I hit the show floor is I got to be on a constant hunt for just interesting stuff just to talk to the dealers about. I actually found at the very, very end of the show some uh, Hombre Araña comic books, the out of canon issues. There was like seven of them. And those things are so scarce. It's so hard to see in person. And they had them displayed behind glass, all with a not for sale next to every single one of the non-canon comics because they're so scarce. And I 
walking out of the show floor. This is post us, you know, our antics on the little dolly, you know, carrying me around on the dolly on the show floor at the end of the show. I found it the very end and asked the dealer, is there any way that we can connect? I would love to get just a video of the pages. Just go through the pages because these things aren't documented anywhere. So I was thinking like for a long time, we got to do all this research to find out any information on this. We can't find the books. We're going to go broke having a four to five, six, seven hundred dollars for these comic books. No, if we just connect with this community at conventions where they gather, maybe we can source some great comic book history. You know, I'm really starting to get some interest in some of these foreign comics. And at the con, I actually did pick up one. I picked up a Omega Man 3, and, yeah. which is first appearance of Lobo. A little bigger. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger format. Um, it's the same artwork, and it's just something different that I wanted to jump into. And it was very, very affordable. It's like 12 bucks. So yeah. it's like I went for it. Most of the time they are, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And, you know, sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll find something, you know, fantastic. Speaks to you. Like these comments. Oh, viewer comments. Let's get into viewer comments. So since some people went to New York Comic Con uh, and weren't here to record a podcast last week, uh, this is from the most recent podcast we did do, which is uh, it's a little old now. It's like uh, a week and a half old as we're recording this. I got a comment from Tom Pickup that says, My Alexa was going mental every time you mention it. I now have a reminder to clean my room. Ooh. There were quite a few comments on that video about us saying, Don't say Alexa in the video about Alexa because our Alexa is hearing you say Alexa. And I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry. Alexa is evil. Samuel Jackson um, doing the Alexa voice, though, that was in reference to that. And yeah. It's got me excited to try to use it. But I'm also a little nervous now because Ryan was so against the use of computers in your everyday life. Not even, not computers, just AI. It's the same thing. I'm going to be doing all that. And that's a, that is a slippery slope. The slipperiest of slippery slopes. Venomized Shooter says Swamp Thing and Hellblazer would be amazing. It also might help fill the void of the Swamp Thong show. I think you meant to say a Swamp Thing. <laughs> swamp Thong? You got the I and the O. They're right next to each other. So, But Swamp Thong is, is kind of a... I think they should bring back um, the TV but... show and, and just call it Swamp Thong and, and just run with that. Was that that song by Cisco? That was. Yeah. Baby, uh, you're wondering where he went. <laughs> swamp Thong. Well, thanks for the comment. We appreciate that. And that was in we reference left. to our uh, DC Black Label conversation. And yes. we actually get to get into that with some of the announcements from New York City Comic Con in, in a little bit. Speaking of which, we have a comment from Billy Bombs who says, let me know how many comic book booths you see here. It gets lower every year. Let's talk about New York Comic Con. How many, uh, how how many, many booths? comic books there were versus you know movie, cosplay, like less comic focused things. Interesting yep. question. Like, what did you feel like? I mean, because that's a question that gets brought up a lot. Like, is it shrinking? So, I mean, that tends to be the thought for a lot of people, um, how comic dealers are getting pushed out because it's getting it's really, really expensive and it goes up, feels like it goes up every year. I do like New York as a comic book show more than I like San Diego as a comic book show. Um, they rearranged some people on the show floor, so it's hard to tell who was there, how many were or weren't from the year prior. But I did not see a couple people that, have been there the last few years so maybe it's getting smaller it didn't feel that way as there were still a lot of comics in the room the amount of dealers um hard to say but like i said i mean it was filled with comics from the biggest dealers and whatever you really wanted you could have got it didn't feel smaller that's for sure and cool. i was also surprised to find out at the end of the convention as i was kind of doing my last rounds that on the other side of the convention there were comic book booths like people that had been set up at New York City Comic Con for over five, six years that just happened to be placed at a booth in the middle of the show, way away from all of the comic sections like that from the tradi for the traditional booths. And I'm thinking, oh, geez, I didn't even know you're out here. And they're that like, sucks. oh, yeah, I've been out here for years. But it is also variety. Like some people just straight up avoid the comic section. So they find success in a section surrounded by anime figures and some, some clothing and people mm. go, Oh yeah, there are comics here. And, Cause it's, it's a big space. I've never been to a big boy con, so I, I don't know. I'd love to get analytics on that though. I'm sure that there's, they must have them, but uh, good question. Thanks for bringing it up. So one of the bigger announcements to come out of New York city comic con, uh, one of the ones that actually kind of has me excited about a character that I'm not really that excited about reading really ever is Thor. Uh, Jason Aaron's run on Thor has, has been going on for a long time, and it is now pretty much over. It's it's wrapping up with this King Thor story he's telling, and now Donny Cates is going to be taking over the uh, 
the Mjolnir duties as he uh, as he showed off when he was lifting that hammer on stage. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I didn't I didn't get to see that till later, but that, I felt that's a pretty dramatic way to make an entrance for the artist for Thor, the writer for Thor. It kind of feels like Donny Cates has almost been steering the direction of Thor behind the scenes in a while for for a while with like all the symbiote stuff and and Null and it it, it I'm I'm interested to see where he takes all of this moving forward because. I've never really subscribed to an ongoing Thor comic before, but I'm probably going to jump on this one. Nulls popped up in the Thor run from years ago. It's likely going to be popping up again here. We have him showing up in Venom. We have hints of him all throughout House of X now. We're seeing signs of him in Silver Surfer Black. This is pretty uh, low-key exciting because the seeds are being planted. We have stuff happening next year. I think it's going to be another year of Kate's. Yeah, something big is really brewing, and um, I'm pretty excited because this has already been pretty fantastic. So I, I just can't only imagine what the h- bigger picture is of all this. Well, first off, Kate's went to Twitter this week and posted some pages from this book. The color work alone has got me excited. So the artist Nick Klein is killing it with this uh, design of the character on the cover. And it's, it's pretty innovative. He's got this kind of cowl crown piece on his head. And then he actually has the two ravens of Odin's ravens are now, maybe he can control those now, which is pretty interesting. And the whole light up stars on his chest is like super energetic and almost seems like it's alive. Plus he still has the chain mail on his legs, the big boots and the cape. It's, it's just looking really fresh and dope and I'm into it. Dope fresh. That's what I say. Community is pumped about this. We also have more news. But this isn't like breaking news because this was announced a minute ago. But we have Black Label coming out with more titles. And DC was excited to show this off at the retailer breakfast. So yeah, we talked about Black Label last time we did the podcast. And one of the uh, complaints or issues that I noticed in the comments down below was that how they want to see more black label books that aren't just about Batman or more the Joker or Harley Quinn or the Joker and Harley Quinn as we saw this re- uh, this week and they're doing a uh, a series of horror comics uh, spearheaded by Joe Hill there's a whole like imprint um, called Hill House Comics that's just going to be like five standalone horror miniseries creator owned and it's all under the Black Label banner, which means that they can have the freedom to do something a bit more mature. This is what I was kind of expecting to happen last year, but I think it just took them a year of having some example titles come out, seeing some success land in the community to have this come to fruition. Especially after they canceled Vertigo. Like, I'm glad, I'm glad to see a horror focus with it's, the Black Label. It's interesting you mentioned that because I was reading an interview with Joe Hill and he mentions that when he kicked the script and the idea of some of these comics that he's spearheading, he kicked it over to, quote, Vertigo. So this was back when Vertigo was a thing and he was thinking he was going to be working with that part of the company. And now we're seeing Black Label become that branch. And those of you who aren't familiar with Joe Hill, Joe Hill is the son of Stephen King. So if anybody we hope can write horror... We're hoping Joe Hill is going to make this black label succeed. We got He's, five titles, man. It's going to be cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. I need to experience Joe Hill. This is honestly going to be my first time dipping my toes into that pool. But I think he's definitely proven himself with uh, like Lock and Key, for example, or uh, Nosferatu. You hear that, Joe Hill? You made Ryan dip your toe. <laughs> Thanks, well, toe. Well, what's really exciting here is that we got five different titles. They're not all being written by Joe Hill, but they are under that. Hill House banner. The first one is being dropped October 30th, which is why this was a focus and a focal point during the retailer breakfast to get the retailers excited, you know, to get their orders in. Basket Full of Heads is about to drop. It's by Joe Hill and art by Leo Max, followed by four other series that are going to be coming out. Uh, I'm excited about this next one, The Dollhouse Family. You asked us to pick which one we were most excited about, and you picked the dollhouse one, and that was the one I wanted to pick too. Like that one, that one appeals to me. It seems creepy. Yes. Yeah. There's really little known about these besides just the overall premise. They all seem very dark. They seem mature. And here's cover one. Cover art's been released too, I believe, for these. Not, cover. None of the interior art that I'm aware of, but just the covers. Not that I've seen, and you know what? I wouldn't look at it if I had yeah. like, if I had an opportunity. I want to go in to. cold. This is something I want to just experience 
as they come out. And you know what? Although only one of these besides basket of head basket full of heads is like really exciting me right now these are five stories that have a backup story oh yeah each of these stories has a backup story of a story called sea dogs i said story like five times i'm gonna keep rolling with it but sea dogs if you want to complete this piece of work you got to get all of the comic books that's probably the one i'm most excited about because it's it's uh, also by joe hill it's written by joe hill and it's it's about like these it takes place in like the american revolution and it's about like uh, uh werewolves Supposedly, and uh, the war in the 1700s, and yeah, oh man, I'm excited. That one's gonna be cool. So yeah, I'm getting all of these, if only just to get that one collected piece on the back of all of them. The retailer breakfast, those scrambled eggs. They're always so fluffy. Yeah, they're always scrambled just right, and that bacon is broiled just right. <laughs> Spawn 300 out of nowhere, just killing it at New York City Comic Con. Yeah, this is Spawn 300 that had 500 copies in the gold and 1,500 of a silver version. The gold was 125 a day. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you have 500. So you know it's a race. People are going to want it. I didn't even know about it, and I saw it for a moment, and I wanted it. And I hated the Spy on 300 covers. Yet I saw this gold foil, Spawn 300, I got weak, and I bought one. You bought one, but you refused to wait in the line, right? You're like, I'm not going to do that. So you you paid just whatever the person was asking, yeah? Yeah. I mean, I thought it was going to be worse, but I did pay a lot for a nice, fine, very fine copy, by the way. Yeah, it's such a bummer, man. But what are you going to do? Like, you, someone else going to be selling it there? Yeah. So anyways, there it was a, it was a chore for many, but then it got a little bit violent on a Saturday. That's right. We actually had a handful of people walk up to our booth that were fans of the show that were in line. So we have on, although I wasn't there, you weren't there in line. So we didn't see any of this actually take place. There were different fans and different friends of ours that all saw this kind of take place in their own versions. But basically, there were like fights breaking out over this comic book. I've seen this in a Funko line. Okay, people going nuts. So to hear that it's happening for Spawn 300, for especially how much hype that Todd McFarlane is putting behind the 300 and and the historical importance of it. I mean, kids being knocked down, fights like you mentioned. I mean, it's just, it was a scene to where, from what I understand, they pulled the books on Saturday, whatever they had left, and probably just redistributed them on Sunday. Yeah, they actually had to cut it early is what I heard. We'd love to hear more input from the community if you witnessed any of this. Because for one, there really isn't a comic book worth it to, to treat people that like good. that. It sounds like a Walmart Black Friday scenario where people are getting trampled and run over and just like, calm down, calm down. It's, you'll get, you just calm down. Don't hurt anybody. It'll be okay. Right. But the, the bummer, like the big bummer, isn't that these are like adults that are jumping over each other. Like the word kids got thrown out there Come on. on more than one occasion. So you got to be thinking this kid's like, they're, they, you pay all this money to get in there. You're waiting in line already. And then now it's become this race to the finish. I like guess it's, uh, it's Reminds it's no me fun. of seeing at the, the baseball game when the kid grabs the baseball and the dude, the older guy behind him, like snatches the baseball right out of his hands. <laughs> For a little kid, right? Well, the little girl gets boxed out and look at the face oh we're gonna get craig to get her a ball (laughs) right that's what i'm thinking of well you could also buy uh what do they call the spawn dump like the oh what is it the dump baby or something yeah the turd baby turd Turd baby baby. yeah this yeah what is that what was that you could buy this turd baby it's a weird spawn thing i don't understand it i haven't looked into it enough but there's pictures of todd holding it it's got a butt crack on the back like what's going on with this i'm not sure it's like a vinyl toy that you that they're selling that you could purchase it came in like a dark blue and a black it looks like we have to describe it for the uh, audio listeners if you're listening to must describe it for you it's critical well if you're listening to us on spotify itunes stitcher or soundcloud because you know that's where this podcast is also streamed with bonus content. Because I actually did meet Todd McFarlane at this show in person, shook his hand, and I'm going to explain how that went down in the after show, only available on the audio formats I just mentioned. How would you describe the turd baby, Ryan? I want to hear your thoughts because this like is Todd holding it. He's smelling it. I have no familiarity with Spawn, so as far as I know, this is a character from the comic. Yeah, it looks like I it. I don't know. It looks like a blue Mr. Potato Head. With red red shoes 
and like big green spawn eyes. It's with called? a butt. With a butt. Does like, he poop? I don't know, but look it. He actually has like on the back, there's an indent for his cheeks. He's got little butt cheeks. And okay. McFarlane is signing them. He's in... like a tramp stamp, like right above the right above the butt crack, like a Tom exactly. McFarlane tramp stamp signature. Uh, exactly. I'd be more excited if you could like push a button and it like pooped out a you know a little jelly bean or something. Yeah. You know? You know? It's got a, t- a turd Multi-use. baby. Multi-use. Right? The... And it's signed. <laughs> and it poops. Well, anyways, so you can get the turd baby, you can get the silver, you can get the gold. And yeah, it's a good time overall. And we also fun. found out some information on where Spawn is headed, but we're going to be staying pace right now with our next story and we're going to save it for the after show. So let's jump now into, I mean, there's a lot of things that were announced, but a lot of it wasn't really announcements. It's like just more information on stuff that we knew was coming. There's five different House of X, Powers of X, like Hickman, the story is going to be continued. We're excited about it. We saw a handful of titles, Stars getting her own solo title. That right there was super exciting to see because, well, for one, when we even brought it up as a new character, we were getting some backlash like, ah, is this even really worth collector's time? Boom, solo series. Uh, They picked it out amongst a ton of characters they introduced this last year to give her her own run. That was pretty pretty cool. Another thing that I am just, I I had to stop. I had to bring it to the table, show the community, because we have to talk about this reprint that's coming out. Do we really have to talk about it? Yes, we have to, man. This is important. This happened, and there's no way that this is coincidental. There's no way that we have this... No way whatsoever. 45-day conversation with the community about Dude. Hulk 181 and about how Marvel has we go. said one thing and shown on a comic book another thing, and then the community's like, no, I know the answer. We a- get hate videos about it. Like, I feel like on the Comic Tom podcast, bingo. You know, For today's episode, you can cross off the, the spots for Donny Cates and the, the spot for Todd McFarlane, and now you can cross off the spot for, <laughs> for Hulk 181. 45 days into this conversation or so. We get a Hulk 180 facsimile coming to our LCS is across the country, but wait, there's something else. Next to it, it says the first appearance of Wolverine. They are declaring it. I've always thought it was. Like, that's me. That's my opinion, my stance on it. He's right there at the end with dialogue. First appearance. I'm just going to say it. Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not even invested. I don't even like Wolverine, <laughs> but it's pretty clear to me. That's that's enough said for me. Uh, I mean, we don't have to get into it too yeah. much, but you can't not get into it. Yeah, let's not get into it. But I, I don't understand why they're putting that on there because in the previews guide it says, I mean, it's it's basically claiming that Hulk 181 is the first appearance when they put the 181 out. So I don't understand like how you're gonna go both here again, like because they are listening to the collectors and they know that this is the subject of conversation. I, this has so to silly. be for us more than the standard That's right. populace because it's Hulk 180. He's not on the cover. Like if you're really thinking about, hey, how do we sell some comic books that are flashy? You get New Mutants 98, right? Because Deadpool's right there introducing Deadpool. How do you get Wolverine fans excited? Boom, Hulk 181. He's on the cover. Greatest Canadian superhero. Get get hyped. Well, Hulk 180. Yeah. How do you sell the cameo? There's a oh, look. Check out the last page. Oh, we put first appearance. Like now they're listening to the community. I want to know your thoughts about this in the comment section below. I don't want to hear them. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to hear them. I, I already it. know them. I, I bet it. that's going to be the majority of the it. comments down below. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's hilarious. Okay. Let's keep it rolling. Let's keep it rolling because we have the Golden Age guru who went to New York Comic Con and bought a bunch of Golden Age books. And I want to chat about that. Yeah, I picked a bunch of Golden Age books, so I'm super excited about them. One of them came from a guy who I see every year, and he's that guy where whenever I see him approaching, I have to take this large inhale and even greater exhale. Why? Because I just know what I'm going to get into this guy. It's going to be a long negotiation. It's going to just be difficult. The guy's an attorney, so it's just like... (laughs) It's like a battle in a courtroom all the time, and it's like... How long does it typically take? He comes back and forth through the con. But generally, like, 45 minutes. I mean, it's a long time to look at a few books. And he's always, like, the margins are never there. And he always wants to trade. And the trades are never fair. And it's always a conversation like, well, that doesn't make sense for me. I know that makes sense for you. And it's, like, every book. And then he finally had one book where I was like, what do you just want for it? I will just buy it. I don't want to trade. What do you What do you want for it? What day is this? Like, paint the picture for me. This was, I think, I think it was Friday. Okay. All right. So... It might have even been Thursday. It might have been the first day of the con. So that might have even be a, a larger eye roll that I'm going to have to see him for the next three, four days. 
and he breaks out Wilbur number five. Now, if you're not familiar with Wilbur number five, it's the first appearance of Katie Keene. She's part of the MLJ, the Archie universe. Okay, she actually has a show coming out here, and I'm not sure what network, but they're not going to have a Katie Keene. They have a Riverdale. They have a Sabrina. I don't watch Riverdale, but I do like Sabrina quite a bit on, and it's nice and dark, and I dig that. Katie Keene is not like that. She's going to be more kind of like a Sex in the City type of feel for her books. Though she was kind of this fashion icon that had like paper dolls in a lot of her books. And paper dolls are like um, a doll figure that you can cut out and then you can cut out the dresses and you put tabs on it. And you could actually write in and send in your drawings for dresses and then they would publish it and they would give you a little um, notation saying who it's from. So it was really cool. And this was back in like, God, mid 40s they were doing this. Well, what cool community interaction that the writers and creators were having. That's pretty dope. Yeah, and Paper Dolls have been around a long time. They've been around for like 200 years. So it wasn't a new thing, but it was a very um, interactive thing with the audience. And she was around for quite a bit. Now she's got a show. I got this Wilbur number five, which is a tough book, and I'm super excited about it. And then that also led, interestingly enough, because in NYCC, they had the announcement that Riverdale is going to have its season premiere of season four. The episode for season four, the very first one, is commemorating Luke Perry's passing in March, Okay, who played Archie's father on the show. And it's supposed to be a really heartfelt episode, and they wanted to let everybody know that and be aware of it. And I actually watched it. I don't watch Riverdale, but I was like, you know what? I should give it uh, a listen and a view. I remember Luke Perry because I grew up watching like 90210 back in the day. And, you know, he's kind of been around generation- generationally for me. And not knowing anything about the character storylines, it, it really was a heartfelt episode and worth watching. So I, I don't know. I, that was one of the interesting things to pick up the first Katie Keene and an MLJ book and then have this NYCC announcement. And it just kind of all tied all together for me. And I felt that to be a really important moment in the show for me. Were these graded comics that you got? You know, unfortunately it wasn't. It was a raw, but um, I feel it's going to probably be around a 3.5, 4.0. I I might press it and hopefully bump it to 4.0. But so that's pretty solid for that book. And it trades pretty well. I think a 3.0, 3.5 is around $1,100 right now, give or take. Yeah, that price is going up on that book. It's as you said, tough. And if you like that shirt that you're wearing, tough book, we just got it made. We also have a Turok Comic Tom shirt and a bunch of others in the merch store. Comic Tom 101.store. If you want to help support the show, you can rep some merch. We got some shirts for you. I also want to share about not just stuff that we picked up that we're excited to, I don't know, grade and you know do things with. What are were you excited about for yourself? Like, let's talk about PC pickups. What about you, Ryan? What did you pick up for yourself recently? When I went to New York Comic Con? Well, I definitely no, just brought just you something back. <laughs> yeah, Tom brought me a little a little, a little, goodie here that I didn't even know existed, honestly. It's, a, it's called Words for Pictures. It's a book that Brian Michael Bendis wrote about creating comic books. And uh, I actually already cracked into it because I'm a nerd. And I like that it's it's like equal parts how, to, how the business works. Mm-hmm. But it's also kind of like... How he got started, and like his, it's kind of like part biography, which uh, I love. So I love, I love the man. The more you understand about how these writers work, the easier it is to learn how you know what they do. Correct. It's an interesting look on the uh, on the inside of the industry. Exactly. I thought you'd like it. I am very much enjoying it so far. So thank you, sir. <laughs> Looks pretty exciting, read man. You got something. It's, it's, it's very Ryan flavored. Did you pick up anything on Wednesday? Did you? Oh man, anything uh, cool? I got like 12 comics this week. What are you most excited about? What am I most excited about? Yeah, oh, you're man. like, I got to get this book and read it. There's a uh, there's a Joker Harley Black Label book that came out. And I mean, I like the Harley Quinn Black Label book that we talked about last time we did a podcast. I'm slightly less excited to try this one, but it's it's a number one. So I'm going to jump into it and see what goes on. All right. There you go. Some some of Ryan's pickups. All right. So I want to know, Jeff, we know we were like the Golden Age book that you were excited about that you had to buy on the spot. But I want to know... Were there any books that you bought that you're like, oh, I'm not selling that. Like, this is for the personal collection. Yeah, yeah. Met up with a friend of mine there, and he sold me a copy of Spirit Comics 22. So this is a classic cover. It's the last issue in the run. Um, so it's one of the more scarce issues through there, and probably the best one of the best covers for it. It's done by Will Eisner, and it uh, was actually cited in that uh, investigation for the 1950s, for the comic code even. But it's this gal who kind of gives you the sultry look on her face in this red dress, blonde hair, and she's got this big slit in her dress, and she's pulling out like a knife 
okay, from her like leg thigh hosing, and it's kind of this femme fatale type of look, but it's such a sexy book. It really is, and it's it was a very solid copy. It needs a little love here and there, but um, it's gonna get a bump, man. It will. It will probably get a good point and a half bump. I'm expecting, and I used to have a copy of this book. But I let it go like six, seven years ago. And the second it left my hands, I felt horrible about you it. You just knew it. I just knew it. I was like, what have I done? I love that you bought it again. And then I was like, okay, I had the chance to buy it again, <laughs> obviously for more money. But it's going to be a really nice copy. It's going to go in my personal collection. So I'm really excited for it. But uh, yeah, sometimes you let those things go. They come back around, but they cost you a little bit more. <laughs> All right. My... Uh most excited comic book that I got. Like, there's a handful. You know, I got a D23 sketch variant. I'm excited about that. I also got a retailer exclusive variant. I, I'm excited about that. I picked you and Russ up one. Got them all signed by Humberto Ramos. If you want to watch the signing of that, you can check out Gem Mint Collectibles. My homie Steven, shout out. He featured the signature signing in his video at New York City Comic Con. So we just saw Humberto Ramos. Yeah, who did the D23 Marvel 1000 variant, and Comic Tom's got the sketch, which is what, one of 30? But the one book that I am, like, super stoked about is a Power Rangers book. And this is kind of funny to say, but I'm a huge Power Rangers fan, all right? I collect the toys. I grew up in the 90s watching Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And there is a crossover event that Boom is doing that I am so stoked about. It's Power Rangers and TMNT. Now, I don't know anything about this storyline, but all that's being solicited is that this is the next crossover event that Boom is doing that's like on a large scale, big franchises that are meeting that for like two giant 90s phenomenon that just happened, it's going to be epic. And I'm, I'm like daydreaming about maybe TMNTs becoming Power Rangers or even better, Power Rangers becoming turtles or something. Like, how dope would that be? We just got a fifth turtle this year. Like, you never know what's going to happen. But the retailer breakfast, it's long. We have to get up early. And a lot of this information we already know. But one of those, like, benefits is that if you stick through it and, you know, we, we're there to, like, get the information out to the community. I got to see Nick. Shout out Key Collector. And, you know, you get a couple of exclusives at the end. And my favorite exclusive was the Raphael retailer exclusive that they released. But here's the thing. That didn't become my favorite book until the end of the show. For one, it's Raphael. And it's my favorite TMNT. But what I didn't know is that if you go to their booth, they had another exclusive. They were selling the Leonardo exclusive at the booth. So I was stoked. I'm like, okay, I'm getting two books now from Boom. I got to get both of them. But then something happened on their Saturday panel, surprising everybody, dropping at the show. Oh, they have another panel exclusive. They gave out a Michelangelo. Everybody but my favorite. I was hoping you were going to say Donatello, man. No one loves Donatello. And it's weird. There's no Donatello exclusive. They didn't make a fourth it. one. It's very strange, but they did make those three. And, you know, because they, you know, they picked out one of my favorites. I'm like, okay. And it was the retailer breakfast. I'm like, I'm excited. You know, it was worth it. Yes, I did it. But, oh my gosh, what a cool thing to do. Like, yes, yeah, they have the booth one, but getting people excited to go to a, bo a boom panel, you got to go. Like, this is the kind of stuff that gets people to wait in line to listen to your event. And I'm so stoked about this event. I can't believe they didn't do at least the four main turtles. My like stuff. It's messed up. And I'm, I've just had the image in my head ever since you mentioned it a few minutes ago about like this new Power Ranger on the scene and it zooms in and he takes his mask off and it's Michelangelo. He's like, oh, bunga deeds, I'm a Power Ranger now. And, and like, I'm really hoping that happens. Right? Who knows? It's going to be crazy. I mean, we have the whole world too. So you got Shredder, you got Casey Jones. Like there's a lot of potential for here to like continue on. But we'll, we'll see the community response. I mean, Shattered Grid was epic. It was so good. And you know what? I'm I'm in. I'm in, boom. It's going to be a dope ride. That's awesome. Teenage Mutant Ninja Ranger. That'd be freaking sick. Right? Teenage Mutant Ninja Mighty Morphin Power Turtle Ranger. <laughs> Mighty Morphin Ninja <laughs> Ranger. Call up Kevin Eastman. You know, make him do some covers. It's going to be dope. It will be dope. 
All right, you got three days left to sign up to the Mystery Mail Car comic book subscription service. Secure your box. Get your copy of Show's End, the Comic Tom exclusive. It's an homage to All Star Comics issue number eight. Link is in the bio to join the community. Ryan, yes, tell the community to download Key Collector. It's going to enhance their collecting so much. You should download Key Collector. It's going to enhance your collecting so much. But honestly, I've been thinking this the whole time. If this app that sponsored us wasn't an app that I used and that I liked, I would not feel comfortable saying the first thing about it. But like Key Collector is actually awesome. Like it's actually it's actually a really good app. It's Fire Guy approved. Big shout out to Jack Frosty. You win the Cosmic Ghost Rider trade paperback. We also have Vince Bacani. You're getting Savage Dragon number one, and it's signed by Eric Larson. We want to know from the community what your favorite announcement or news featured in this show was. What did you purchase at your LCS this week? What are you hunting for? We just want to hear from you. Comment down below. We have two giveaways we're doing today. The first is courtesy of Godly Comics over on Instagram. This dude's awesome. He donated a bunch of these rogue variants. The negative space is more gorgeous in person than it is. Blinding. It's blindingly gorgeous. It really is. It's amazing. And it's numbered uh, 100. That says 1,772 out of 3,000. There you go. Hey, I got close there. I was going to guess. I was going to guess one of 3,000. It's one of those. It's number one. No, it's it's not number one. That'd be cool. um, Then we also have Batman, The Long Halloween. Perfect. This actually is from the PC. I read it. It was really good. I reread it when I found out that there was news about the film. That's the rumor. And you know what? You're going to take my copy, comic fam. So comment down below. Let us know what you think of the show. We're going to continue this conversation in the post show. We have some pretty fun stories. We're talking about Tom McFarlane. He's taken Spawn to issue 600 for some ooh interesting reasons. We also have a story about how I met him at New York City Comic Con. It was really funny. And I'll tell you about that in a little bit. And then also we're going to chat about the Marvel Universe officially legalizing marijuana. It's going to be a fun time. Come join us in the after show. Hit the like and subscribe button. We make a lot of comic book content. And then, as always, geek responsibly. You're supposed to geek responsibly. Enough said. <laughs>